there's no question about it. Some version of Yorion Fires is the best deck in standard right now, period. Hey everybody, it's Dave here from Dragon Hill Games. All right, let's jump right into the deck tech. So we're going to be using Yorion as our companion. And in order to do that, our starting deck must contain at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size check. When Yorion enters the battlefield, we can exile any number of other non-land permanents we both own and control, and then return those to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. And that part's very important, next end step, because we do run Thassa in this deck, so there's a weird interaction with Thassa and Yorion. Anything you blink after using Thassa to blink Yorion, anything that Yorion blinks will not be returned to the battlefield until your opponent's end step, so keep that in mind. All right, jumping right into the deck. Three copies of just really good value in something like this and then our blink package so these are all things we get really good value out of by blinking them over and over especially if we can do them every turn Bertha Miletus helps us survive the early game especially against aggressive red decks and things of that nature and we always hit our land drops because we're always tutoring planes out of our deck of course omen of the sea the extra scry and draw is really good especially when you're doing something like that every turn omen of the forge helps us manage our opponent's board state and then we can always just throw the damage at their face if necessary and and Omen of the Sun helps us clog up our side of the board with a bunch of 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens, and then we also gain life from it. Okay, let's have a look at our control package. Now I'm running two copies of Bone Crusher Giant. I just really like this guy, so super good at having access to the stomp in the early game, and then of course the giant can just beat people down as a 4-3 in the later game. Four copies of Teferi Time Raveler, because why not? He's only the best planeswalker in the three mana slot. A couple of copies of Deafening Clarion help us weather early aggressive opponents and then four copies of shatter the sky now elspeth conquers death is just really really busted in this deck elspeth conquers death comes in we exile something on their side with cmc3 or greater and then in the last step we can return a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard to the battlefield put a plus one plus one counter or a loyalty counter on it really gross when you're doing this every turn by blinking yorion and Elspeth conquers death using Thassa. Four copies of Fire of Invention. Now, it's kind of funny because Fire of Invention is just almost like a side note in this deck. It's really good, and so don't get me wrong. Obviously, if you get it, you want to be playing it on curve because then we can use all the mana that we have to dump into things like Thassa and use that to tap down our opponent's board, things of that nature. But this deck can win without Fires of Invention. It's not an absolute necessity to have it. And that's one of the things that makes this deck so strong compared to other versions of Fires from the past. This one can just outright win on its own. Of course, having Fires just accelerates the process. Then we also running a couple of copies of Thassa Deep Dwelling. Now, as I mentioned, when you blink Yorion, keep this in mind. When you blink Yorion using Thassa at the end of your turn, when Thor Yorion re-enters the battlefield, anything you blink with Yorion will not be coming back until your opponent's end step. And most of the time, that doesn't matter when it's things like all of the omens or birth of Miletus. But if you happen to blink some of your creatures, just remember you won't have them until your opponent's end step. Blinking something like Cavalier of Gales is really busted with Thassa. I mean, being able to brainstorm every single turn just seems like a pretty good deal. And then I run two copies of Kenrith the Return King and three copies of Dream Trawlers. These are just good value creatures to have in the deck. Kenrith is the kind of thing that can turn the game around, especially when you get down to like, you know, three, four life or something crazy from an aggressive red opponent. You drop down Kenrith the Return King. It's a big stompy creature that they could just have trouble dealing with on its own. But then of course, if we used fires to cheat in Kenrith, we can right away gain five life and put us right back into the game. Dream Trawler is the same type of deal. It's just something that a deck like Red Deck or Rakdos Sacrifice or something like that just can't answer Dream Trawler. Just really good value. It's too big. It's out of the range of all their sort of board wipes that they happen to run main board. And then, of course, we have our 3-5 Flying Lifelinker that draws us extra cards every turn. Just a good quality creature deserving of a deck like this. Now the land package is a little bit up in the air, so use whatever lands you already have available to you. I happen to be running seven copies of both planes and islands. I'm running six mountains and then four hallowed fountains, four sacred foundries, just the one steam vents, and three fabled passage to total up to 32 lands. Now there is the one triome that's in these colors and I really debated about putting these into the deck. If you feel it's a good fit for you, go ahead and throw them in by all means. But I really wanted everything to be on curve and tap lands really take away from having you play on curve, obviously. I'm looking to do things like turn one opt, you know, turn two, drop one of these guys, 
uh, turn three, I either want a Teferi or def Deafening Clarion, depending on what the board state looks like. And then, of course, turn four, I'm looking to drop fire. So I want to be able to do, like I said, all of those things on curve. And I'm really worried about having tap lands in the deck taking away from my ability to accomplish that goal. All right, I included a bunch of gameplay videos, so make sure you take a moment to check those out. It's great to see how this deck operates and all the interesting interactions, especially with things like Yorion, Elspeth, and Thassa Deep Dwelling. Now, I also included the deck list in the description of this video, so if you need to, go ahead and check that out. I've done the hero thing before. this.
show remorse. I'll show restraint. No, I am not making this up as I go. meet again. No longer.
All right, I really hope you guys enjoyed having a look at my version of Yorion Fires. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. It really helps me out, and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.